Hi, I'd like to just uh, take a few points up because I've been listening to the Jeremy Vine show, which I tend to listen to quite a lot. I think a lot of the points that were made on there were quite fair. What they didn't get was the whole truth and what was really going on about the pensions and why our particular group of women were targeted. Um, and in my opinion, deliberately, deliberately uh, information withheld so that they could sneak it in under the radar so they could at this stage say we've had so many years to do this. Um, I was a single parent from no fault of my own from 26 years old. I worked two to three jobs to bring up my children and keep a roof our, over our house. To say that people had time to make provision is fine when somebody has two partners working and there is enough money coming into the house to make that provision. I grafted all my life um, for 30 years as a single parent. I'm still helping my family now, um, not financially, but with my actual care. Um, and to do that, I've had to make several financial sacrifices to do that. One of the points was um, I was totally unaware that my pension was going to change until I heard it by word of mouth, never informed. Don't read the back page of the Financial Times, so hardly likely I was going to ever see that very small advert that they put out there. Um, so when I did find out, I thought it was 62 at the time, I think when I first started to hear something, and I thought, okay, once I sell my house and downsize to realise some money to enable us to make the jump down here, we couldn't afford to buy with having to rent down here. So we made provision uh, to try and do that in a, in a sensible way. Um, we got down here and then I realised not long ago, probably about 18 months ago for that, that my pension age had now gone up to 66. Um, so I have spent my life savings being down in Kent, helping my family, um, that should have been to give us some kind of ease. Um, had I not been unfortunate enough to lose my two mums and um, my stepmom and my mum and inherit a small amount from both, I would have now been in a state of poverty like many of these women are and I am by no means badly off compared to some and there are people committing suicide because of this, there are people living in their cars, there are people having to sell their homes, which I did as a matter of choice but now realise that I've had to use that money to survive because my pension has gone. Uh, and the total that I am probably owed is a six year delay, so it was round about approximately £44,000. I'm extremely angry that people are being misled, that we are not about equality. We, I was quite happy, and not entirely thrilled, but happy to allow my pension to come up two years, because I'm, I'm, I'm a feminist, but I also believe equality works both ways. And I think that would probably have been a fair move had we had sufficient notice to make other provision. And in my case, <laughs> I had not a, a hope of making other provision because I was always living close, even though I bettered myself, I retrained. I was always living close to the breadline to, to keep my kids with a roof over the heads and fed and clothed. One person does not, self-employed does not make a living wage. And I think we all know that nowadays with the rise of poverty and employment. So to say that people had more than enough time um, is wrong. And we are not about being given preferential treatment. We are about getting what is right. We were deliberately, deliberately withheld information so that we weren't told so we wouldn't make a fuss early and challenge this sooner a lot of women are going through abject stress and poverty like myself the stress not so much poverty although i'm sure it will come at some point soon um and and what i am about is is getting people to realize that the government is trying to make people realize that think that we are hysterical women that are trying to get something preferential treatment we were never equal I could never get a pension offered to me. I was doing several part-time jobs. I was low paid wage. When I got divorced, no one told me I could have taken a share of my husband's pension. My first equal pay was when I worked for a woman-led organization in 2009. I worked for a government organization as a civil servant. And in the parity issues, they actually raised a, a colleague's wage up. There was a similar job to mine gave him a raise under parity, and they took two and a half grand off me, which I think was a, a bit of a farce, really. So as a woman of the 50s, we were never equal. And, and it's not about us not wanting equality. It's not about us wanting... I think it's quite right that men and women should have the same pension age. But don't forget, 
we are by nature and by history, and, and not totally because there are men doing it, we are by nature the carers, we are by nature the ones who are uh, not as well paid, we are not as well treated in the employment work workforce um, area, and I think it's only right that right at this moment we judge not only that we were never equal, but we were not told, and it was a deliberate misrepresentation that is going on now that we are trying for something that is preferential treatment and that we haven't been able to make other arrangements. Some of us couldn't make other arrangements. It's about what is right. And if we look back in history, and if you look at some of the quotes from uh, George Osborne about it was the easiest money saved as a finance minister, he targeted us and he tar they targeted the pensions part to bail out the banks. Do we not know this? And this is not about us. It's about a whole other deeper issue that people in general should be really worrying about. And I think we're going to stop ranting because I'm so angry right now.